So this is the brand new Garmin 40970. Been waiting two years for it and it is finally here. And of course I just got back from a run to be able to show you how all these new features work in real life. But it's not the only thing Garmin announced today. They also announced the brand new Garmin 570, the successor to the 265. So there's no 270 coming, it's just this here, the 570, and they announced a new heart rate strap, the HRM 600, which is the successor to the HRM Pro Series straps. And I'm gonna dive into all that stuff a little bit later on, including a separate video on the 570, but for now, this is all about the new features in the brand new 4Runner 970. So let's just simply get right into it. The very first thing to know about this watch is they've added a flashlight there to the front. So very similar to what you've seen on the Phoenix and Instinct series in the past. This flashlight has four different levels of white brightness and then one level of red brightness or red LED light. Uh, you just simply double tap the upper left hand button to turn it on or off. And it's one of those features that myself and actually really more my wife is like hardcore on. She will not have another watch unless it has a flashlight flashlight. So maybe we'll switch from her Phoenix to the Forerunner app. Next up on the other side, they've added the new Garmin Elevate Gen 5 optical heart rate sensor. That sensor increases the accuracy uh, during activities, especially for interval activities and higher intensity activities compared to the previous Gen 4 optical heart rate sensor. But more importantly than that actually is the fact that it adds ECG functionality to the watch. So medical grade ECG functionality in approved countries, that includes the US, the EU, and a whole slate of other ones as well, uh, that you can do right from your wrist. You simply do have to walk through a quick little like onboarding process with your phone to confirm the fact that you know that it does not detect heart attacks. Then after that, you're good to go to do AFib detection and then send that ECG report off to your doctor. In addition to the ECG functionality, they've also added in skin temperature functionality as well. So nightly skin temperature readings. Uh, and next up on the internals of this, uh, but also kind of on the outside, they've added a microphone and a speaker. Uh, so in the past, there was a beeper, but not a speaker. Now there is a proper speaker. Uh, and then with that, a microphone for things like voice commands, voice assistance. Expect some clear skies tomorrow. Daytime temperatures will hover around 72 degrees with overnight lows around 62. And you'll also hear that speaker throughout your workouts, uh, giving you commands. And you'll also hear that speaker throughout the workout with a little bit more pleasant tones than that beeper in the past. This is very similar to what Garmin's implemented on the Venue 3 series and kind of like the Phoenix 8 series, but the Phoenix 8 has more features around uh, that microphone, including notes and things like that, that is not included on the 400 uh, Next up on the top here, they've changed the glass a lens material uh, to be a sapphire crystal from the grill glass in the past. Otherwise, it's still a 47 millimeter case size, uh, 1.4 inch display, uh, still AMOLED display like you've seen in the past. Do not expect any sort of MIP-based Forerunner at this point. That's that ship has sailed, sailed over to the Instinct and the Phoenix camp in case you need a mid-based display. You'll find it over there, but for the Forerunner, that, that ship's gone now. On the bright side though, it is slightly thinner, 0.3 millimeters thinner than the 400 965. Now from here on out, we're gonna dive mostly into the sporting features because there is a ton of new sporting features, both profiles as well as just new features all together. However, first things first, uh, YouTube here says that only 13% of you subscribe, which, which isn't so awesome. So you can hit subscribe or if you just simply we watch the video all the way through, that makes the YouTube gods happy and we, we wanna make them happy. Now, in terms of those sport profiles, they've added 15 new sport profiles. I've listed them all right there compared to the 4965. All of these are profiles we've seen on the Phoenix A and a couple other watches since then. However, one of the new things here is the ability to push a multi-sport structured workout into the watch. So you can create that on Garmin Connect and then push that into the watch with particular targets that you might want for that workout. And continuing that triathlon trend, there's also the Garmin Triathlon Coach now offer on this watch. So you can go ahead and target a given race that you want down the road, a triathlon race, of course, uh, and target whether you want a given time or whatever it may be, and dynamically create that training calendar for you and then change it on the fly. In the past, that was limited to running and cycling events. Uh, now that fully supports triathlon as well. Moving away from those aquatic and cycling people, uh, there is also a ton of running focused features. And the first one is running tolerance. Uh, what this is basically going to show you is how much you can uh, absorb in this particular week from a running distance standpoint. It kind of goes back to like the old adage of you shouldn't add, you know, X amount more miles each week to your long run. So to be like no more than two miles a week to your long run, whatever the case may be. Same sort of thing here. It'll show you your last seven days of running mileage, uh, and then it'll show you what you can absorb for the next seven days. And of course, it's looking at much longer history than just the last seven days. Uh, so in my case, I actually haven't done a lot of running in the last 
last three to four weeks, done a ton of cycling, but not as much running. Uh, and so it's a little bit lower than normal. Next, they've added another new feature, impact load factor. Uh, so I just got back from a trail run right now. You'll know that when you go downhill, uh, for especially long distances, especially steep uh, descents, uh, that has a much higher impact on your legs than just a flat run would. So impact load factor is comparing that run to a totally flat run. In fact, you can actually see that my run right here, when I go down these steeper descents, it has a much higher impact to my legs than the flat portions. Next up is the new running economy feature. This is looking at your running efficiency overall. And this feature actually requires the new Atrium 600 strap, which is 169 bucks. Yep, yeah, it requires that strap. Uh, and it's gonna give you this metric, but it does again require you to do a bunch of runs, not just one run, but numerous runs, ideally on flat terrain, uh, but it'll take all runs into account and then eventually start spitting out your numbers uh, for your running economy. Now, one of the numbers it uses is the new step speed loss uh, metric. So yet another one of the Garmin Running Dynamics metrics also requires that new strap as well. Uh, and that, and that metric is going to look at your losses when you eat your foot and you'll see that data metric fluctuate whether you're going down hills or on flats or going up hills uh, as to those step speed losses. The thing is like most of Garmin's running dynamic metrics, it's something you tend to look at like once, maybe twice, maybe even three times and then never look at it again. I suspect that's gonna be the same thing here with step speed loss and maybe to a certain degree, the running economy versus I think the impact load analysis is actually much more useful, uh, especially in terms of injury prevention and especially if you're doing a bunch of uh, running with hills involved where you might be gaining a lot of descent time. Next up is something that does not require buying a new heart rate strap or even Garmin Connect Plus. It's totally free as long as you pay for the, the 970, which is the new auto lap by timing gates. Uh, so this is kind of a weirdly worded uh, feature, but the way this works is that if you create a course for your particular route, uh, it'll create those mile markers or kilometer markers on that course. Uh, but what you do is you then push that course to your watch and then your watch is effectively linked to that route going forward so that you get the splits that are accurate to the distance and not accurate to any variations that you might have with weaving around in the crowd and stuff like that. Uh, so if you've done a big city race before or any sort of big race, your distance on your watch tends to be a little bit longer. This tries to compensate for that and give you a little bit more clarity about uh, your actual lap splits uh, as opposed to the ones that you had doing all that weaving. Next, there's a whole slate of smaller features that are worthwhile mentioning. Uh, first up is that when you unbox this thing for the first time, it'll offer to migrate your previous former watches to the 970. We've seen this on other Garmin watches, but it is nice to see here as well. Uh, they've added the large font mode option, so you can now increase the font sizes. In case your eyes would prefer a little bit larger font size, you can now do that. Uh, next, they've added focus modes. We saw this on the Garmin Phoenix 8. Uh, so the idea here is kind of like focus modes on your phone, but I would say this isn't really flushed out entirely in the Garmin world yet, but that same sort of concept. They've added multiple battery uh, profiles, multiple battery modes. In the past on the 965, uh, you could basically have one battery profile that you could kind of tweak. Now you can create your own battery profile and then tweak those battery profiles for different needs. They've increased the clarity of the maps that roughly now match the Phoenix 8 maps. Uh, and then with that, you'll see a lot of the Phoenix 8 uh, mapping features now on the 400 970 as well. For example, the top there's that little radius uh, kind of option there is now on the 970. Uh, and across the board, you're seeing a lot of the Phoenix 8 features on the 970 from a software standpoint. In fact, one of those is a new user interface. Uh, it's not exactly the same as the Phoenix 8, but it's very, very similar with a little bit of like, forerunner sachet on top of it. Next, there's a new evening report feature, which gives you details about what's gonna to happen tomorrow. Uh, in similar way to the morning report feature, we do that for the upcoming day ahead, but with your overnight stats on sleep and HRV and things like that. Uh, they've gone ahead and they're adding past ovulation estimates as well uh, as part of the larger uh, women's health tracking feature set. And then rounding home here, they've increased the battery life in most categories, most of the GPS categories. However, they have reduced the battery life in smartwatch mode. You can see those comparisons down at the bottom there. Uh, I think for most people, that's probably a fair trade-off. I would prefer more GPS battery time uh, than the sort of like fictitious um, smartwatch battery time, but that's, that's just me. Uh, they've also very slightly increased the weight by a couple grams, not very much. And then most notably, probably the most important thing at all, they've increased the price by a lot. Uh, so the price has gone from $5.99 to $7.99. Uh, that is 
I guess that's 2025 for you. Uh, we'll talk more about the price later on in the full end up review. Uh, but for now, that just gives you everything you need to know about the 400 970. Uh, most notably, as I mentioned earlier on, there's nothing on this watch that requires Garmin Connect Plus. I'm not gonna include it in my review at all because I don't really think Garmin Connect Plus is worth it at this point in time. But, but every single thing I've just talked about uh, and everything you plan to do on this watch does not require a Garmin Connect Plus in any way, shape or form, which is their paid subscription. You can just use the free side for, well, everything. With that, there's plenty more sports tech goodness coming up, including my thoughts on this one, which um, will be less positive than my thoughts on the 970. Uh, and then, of course, we'll dive into the HRM 600 as well. With that, have a good one.